Hi, I'm Micah Khan from Movie Maker Magazine. Today I got a chance to talk to Roland Emmerich about how he makes his films. From Independence Day to The Patriot to The Day After Tomorrow and his brand new movie, Moonfall, starring Halle Berry and Patrick Wilson as astronauts who have to save the Earth from its greatest threat, the moon. Here we go. When does a story start for you? Does it, is it an image? Is it a line of dialogue? Well, it's, a, it's a, every movie a little bit different, I mean, mm. I have to say. Uh, with, for example, uh, with um, The Patriot, it was uh, just like how two lines of people walk like this and shooting with cannonballs at this. That they even like didn't run away. And they're like kind of sometimes like uh, smash their legs, uh, take their head off. And they're just like kind of did it. And that shows you like kind of uh, you know, uh, a lot about, you know, what uh, the Patriot was about, because it's about individ individual, in, uh, to be individual against, you know, like mass uh, war kind of thing. Other uh, shot was like, for example, uh, 2012, my first image was like, uh, water has to come over the Himalaya. If it doesn't come over the Himalaya, then uh, something is wrong, right? So, yeah. so all these kind of things, you know, have most of the time one first idea. Uh, and in and, and this one, uh, in, in Moonfall, it was like actually uh, that the moon is not what we think it is. When you get that image, right, that one image of like the water going, you know, over the Himalayas or, or the moon isn't exactly what it seems, what's next for you? Do you... Uh, do you go to a storyboard artist and you go, hey, I want to draw this sequence out, or do you start writing immediately? No, 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 no. I, I start immediately writing. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, uh, we're like kind of working from a, in a very short form, you know, mm -hmm. it's like two, three pages, that's it. It cannot be longer than two, three pages, because if it's like longer than two, three pages, it becomes too, com too complex and too complicated. And then the and next by the and by three thing. pages, do you mean the action scene or the like a treatment? No, 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 everything what happens in the film. I mean, more yeah. or less, you know, try to sum it up in two, three pages. Oh, okay, and, cool. Yeah, and then the next step is like a, a treatment, mm -hmm. which is like, let's say, 30 to 35 pages. And um, when, you, when, when I do that, it's most of the time, um, you know, uh, already scene by scene by scene. Uh, I, I hate to do uh, stuff which is like kind of general. It has to be scene, 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 you know. It has to be really like that. And then, uh, and then it becomes more and more complex. But, uh, uh, and then, you know, we start writing the script. What is it about these um, action movies that attracts you as a director? Is there something you're trying to find as a director that gives you great pleasure in directing like these big action movies? Because I'm a big action movie fan. It's what I want to do with my career. So I'm always looking for like, how to make the best action movie possible. What are what are what are some of the ways that you've approached different action movies in the past? And what have you learned from each one? Well, uh, I mean, I have to say, you know, um, this was a a uh, movie where we have a lot of um, incredible things happening on Earth because the moon, for obvious reason, uh, when it comes closer and closer, uh, whatever this thing does to it, you know, uh, it ramps up the, um, the gravity. And because of that, you know, like you have crazy car chases and stuff like that. Um, and what I mainly kind of think uh, is um, something what I always like kind of uh, tend to do is I have a lot of planes in my films for some mm -hmm. odd reason. Maybe that's because my uncle was like uh, a fighter pilot. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's like kind of one thing I, I, I like very much. Uh, aerial battles uh, are uh, a given for me. Um, but even like when you do like um, some, uh, when I do some movie like a, um, Independence Day or Independence Day Resurgence or like um, um, or, or the Midway, that's all like kind of flying stuff. It's like, uh, and, and flying stuff is actually really great because you don't even ever have to 
uh, too much action. <laughs> you know what I mean? The action is happening <laughs> later. Sure. You know what I mean? There's not much. It, it actually, when you when you look at all my movies, there's not much action in it. There's like big action sequences, mm -hmm. but there's not much action. You know what I mean? Right. Like yeah. Time, uh, somebody driving a, a, a you know, like a a, 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 um, a a bus or you know, and uh, I mean, there's always like a object people are in, and they encounter the impossible. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and what that also means for me, it's because I actually don't like much to shoot action. Mm -hmm. Because then I can get the action out of the way really fast, and and I'm like here with the with the character scenes, and then mm -hmm. I a lot you know that I then uh, do is uh, 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 most of these shots are uh, full CG. So you get your action scenes out of the way then, right? So mm -hmm. what is it about working with the actors that you like to? Is there you say you keep your characters as simple as possible? Yeah, I, I so love, then. I, I love um, working with actors, you know, because yeah. they have most of the time very simple problems. Uh, yeah. They have uh, sometimes just uh, because she's a woman, uh, she has a little bit uh, a tougher time to get, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, accepted. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, for example, Holla's problem, you know, and uh, and then uh, nobody believes uh, Patrick Wilson that he saw her small. Uh, and then uh, with um, uh, nobody believes that uh, Dr. Casey Hausman thinks that the moon is a mega structure. That's our three main problems. Mm -hmm. And right there, that's as simple as it goes. And uh, yeah, they have a lot of inner life. They have a lot of uh, to contribute. But that's at the heart. That's their problem. How do you find the inner life? Do you, is it just from? Casting the right actor? No, because you 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 like uh, what you do is you uh, ask yourself. So, what is the character's problem? What is the character's problem? And then you say, oh, who could play him? You know what I mean? It's it's not that you like say, oh, there's like uh, no, that's like most most of the time it's only two or three actors who could play it. Mm. You, you know, and and that's it. That's all what you have. And uh, so, in a way, it's, um, it's, it's, it's sometimes really tough because you try to cast exactly the perfect people, which happens to be uh, a real boon in, in, in a moonfall. It was not always like that. You know what I mean? For me, it was always a little bit more troubled in a way. But like in, in Moonfall, I have to say, we got exactly the right cast. There was yeah. like, uh, uh, even down to the smallest uh, person. When you get your cast together, like what, what is the, your first day on set, right? The first day of shooting, what's going through your head? Like you've got the script down, like what, what is the first thing you do when you get to a movie set? Most of the time it's the, the one or two weeks uh, before um, the shoots are uh, even more important than what you do on the first day mm. because you pretty much like uh, uh, fire as many uh, notes uh, at your crew as possible mm. uh, because wh whatever you do, you have to be really aware that like the last four weeks, let's say the last four weeks is like murder. I mean, yeah. honest to God, it's murder because you get asked like, you go from meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting for sometimes 12, 14 hours. And you have to always be boom, 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 right? And then actually when you like do the first day, you kind of really can relax because yeah. you have done more or less the work and then mm -hmm. only on the weekends you have then to work a little bit. But uh, then you like uh, have done more or less everything which, uh, which needed to be done and then actually it's good to then have actors you just have some actors and you work with them and and you like direct them and uh, and that's actually really fun then for me but uh, that's really really i i enjoy this very much how do you find is the best way to create a sense of geography in your action movies because i've noticed that they're extremely clear 
in what's happening and where the characters are. And that's a huge challenge for any filmmaker. When I made my first action movie, it was just like so difficult to figure out like where all the moving parts should be. So it's the clearest for the audience. So where do you, where do you start with something like that? Most of the time, what, uh, most of the time what I do is like first shoot a master. Mm. Because when you don't have a master, how do you ever come to a good scene? Uh, so I, I spend quite some time on masters. Uh, mm. Even it's like sometimes one or two, three hours, doesn't matter. And then you can uh, place them. Mm. And, uh, and, and that's uh, most of the time how I do it. Uh, because when you don't see them all together, how do you, how should they, how, how should this all work? And when you yeah. have like kind of two people, just two people standing next to each other, that's quite easy. Uh, but uh, when it's three or four or five or six people, then it uh, becomes very, very complicated. Mm -hmm. And then what you want to do is like kind of, you want to kind of try to shoot everything with, uh, sometimes I use Steadicam. And I shoot the whole scene, even there's some unusable parts, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Just like kind of go through the thing for the other side. And then, uh, so there is a flow to it. There's a total flow to it. And then you uh, move and shoot your close-ups. Yeah, I'm really thinking about your movies now in my head, like all the scenes are running through my head right now, like, like from most of your movies. And I'm like, oh, they really aren't action scenes. They're just people surviving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're just like people just trying to get out of, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's about survival and that's all that interests me. Uh, having like, I mean, in my very, very first movie, uh, A Universal Soldier, I had to do a lot of action scenes, but I, I didn't enjoy that very much. Yeah. Yeah. And then for your next movie, it was, um, what was your next movie? Was it, was it? Stargate. Stargate. Okay. So for, for Stargate, like, what was what was something you learned from Universal Soldier that you took to Stargate? Well, I'd like I could first time do my own movie. Yeah. <laughs> my bad. The one was like another work for hire, right? Yeah. And now I could do my own movie. That was yeah. my first uh, own movie in Hollywood. And I knew exactly what I was doing. I had it all somewhat uh, down. And... There I actually learned a little bit that it was uh, very, very important to keep sim sim simple. Mm. We made like kind of this uh, raw character too complicated. Mm. And then uh, only when we like kind of then did a little reshoot where we like kind of then, you know, had, uh, uh, had um, you know, like an alien inside uh, Ra, uh, it started to work, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like just this very simple little thing, you know, and yeah. uh, it, it worked really well. And, uh, and the movie became uh, a sleeper hit. Is there anything else that you feel as a filmmaker that you really love to play in? Like, what's another sand, like, other than aerial dogfights, like, what's another thing that you really love to add to movies? Um, I think I would like to do a big TV show next. Yeah. Just like, uh, you know, we're like kind of working on different stories. Uh, but one is like uh, called Those About to Die. And uh, I think I will do this one next. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's about the sports business in Asian Rome. In where? In Asian Rome. Oh, okay. So it's a, it's a period piece. Ooh, I'm excited. No airplanes. So that's something to fall behind there. Yeah. No, no airplanes, <laughs> but like kind of chariots. <laughs> Okay, Ooh. fair enough. So, are you going to be watching a lot of Ben Hur, like Ben Hur, over again? Yeah, and like, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of all these movies. I mean, yeah, uh, give me any uh, you know sandal movie ever made, and I watch it like. Hypnotic. Same here. Is there anything from Moonfall that you think you're going to take over to your next project? Is there anything you learned, or is there any advice that you have for filmmakers out there right now? I don't. I don't think there's. Uh, I would say I would keep it more simple. Mm -hmm. I would keep it more simple. I would like maybe only have one son, because I have like two sons. <laughs> you know. What I mean? Yeah. He has a son. He has a son. It's a little right. bit confusing, right? <laughs> and uh, that is like kind of uh, something I would uh, probably not do again. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, 